Hi everyone, I'm Frank from the City of Games, and today I'm going to teach you the two to four player game Defection, designed by James Tomlin and published by Thunder Vaults Game. Now, please do keep in mind for the sake of this video, I am using a prototype, so some of the pieces may change between now and the final production. The world Calressa has been at war for a while now, and we are defecting from the armies. We are no longer ready to just fight against these meanest battles that are keeping us back so now we are going to leave we are going to try and take as many civilians with us we're going to ferry cargo and we're going to try and become the greatest legend in the system so let's start talking about the setup of the game this is how the game looks when you begin now i'm going to talk you through this a bit at a time so we can get used to how to set up the game the first thing is the map. You're going to see here in the center of the table, you want to set up the Kelressa tile. This has got two sides, the planetary side and a destroyed side. So start with it on the planet side. Above that, you're going to want to put the cube tile. And then to the side, you're going to want to put four and then three white hexagons and the same on the other side and one below. You're then going to want to place two red hexagons on the edges of either side. And then finally, you're going to take the eight different planet um, tiles you're going to shuffle them and put six of them around the edge of the board then take the planetary bonus tokens and again shuffle them take six of them and place one randomly on the back of each of the six different hexagons finally you can place the remaining hexagons in two piles the red back and the white back and take the other two um, colony planets and put them below for later use as well you're then going to want to take the moon token and place it immediately below Kelressa. We're now set up with the map, so let's jump over and have a look at the news board. The news board is where we keep track of rounds and points in the game. The first thing you're going to want to do is to set this to the year one side. Again, this is double sided. Place it on the left hand side with the year one at the top left, and then you are going to want to put the 40 point um, tokens here. You're going to want to put a number of cargo cubes here equal to the player count so on here you'll see that two players is 15 three players is 20 and four players is 25 we're setting up for a two player game so we've placed 15 cargo tokens here Next, you're going to want to take the breaking news cards. You are going to want to take the red card and you're going to then want to take the green cards, shuffle them and put the red card on top. Once you've placed it on top, put it on the left hand side of the news track like so and we are good to go over there. But beneath this, you're going to want to set up the market. Take the four different faction crew tile sets, shuffle them, put them in the face down piles and then reveal two on each type below. Take the three different ship types of cards, shuffle them and put them face up below and then take the different upgrade tokens. You're going to find there are five different green ones, five different purples and four different gold ones. Group them by colour, stack them into the piles and the market is sorted. You're then going to want to put some of the other tokens around the board. You're going to have some news event tokens, some contract tokens, some white generic cubes which are used for tracking things. You're going to have some damage tokens, some additional cargo tokens and then also some scrap metal tokens. These should just be placed anywhere you can reach. Likewise, the encounter cards and the dice should all be placed in an accessible place. Finally, each player is going to want to take a coloured player sheet and all of the matching coloured pieces. So, you are going to want to take a crew tile and you are going to have two choices. You can either have the female or the male side. We could be Jane or we could be Frank. Fancy me being Frank. So I think that's the side I'm going to take. You're going to take the extra crew seat and just put this one onto here. You're going to take your domination tokens and put them into a pile to the side of the domination section. You're going to take two white cubes and place them here to represent zero and then seven credits, the starting amount. You're going to want to take 22 population cubes of your color and place them in the population section you're going to take five remaining white cubes and put them down here in a storage area you are going to take the two gun tokens you're going to take the crystal token and you're going to place the honor token in their corresponding spaces and finally you're going to put your starting ship in the ship slot each player should do this and then on top of that you should take one more population cube of your color which will be put onto the score track it should start on five legend because everyone in this game starts with five points and then 
finally you're going to take your corresponding ship and place it on the Kelresa space. Now, that is everything set up. You're going to find there's a few other pieces, but that is everything you need to know about for getting going. All of the other tokens you can just place in piles around the board and they may or may not come into play. Finally, there is a first player token, so you can place this in front of the first player to decide who's going to go first and then to remind them that they are the first player on each round. So, with the game set up, we're now going to get into how it plays. And as I mentioned, we're going to play over eight years or eight rounds. At the start of each round, you are going to move the news tracker down one space. In the first round, you're simply going to put it into the first slot. So at the start of the game, we've put this here. And in future rounds, we're going to move it down to the corresponding news places. Once you've moved it or in the first round placed it, you are going to turn over the news card. At the start of the game, you are always going to get the red card and then you're going to move through the green cards that have been shuffled. You're going to read this out loud. War begins. As war on Kedaressa becomes more violent than ever imaginable, defecting ships venture out in search of safer homes for civilians caught in the crossfire. So these cards are going to give you the narrative of what's happening in your journey through this world and then they're going to tell you a bonus or a negative that takes place for the next few rounds. In this instance, you will gain one legend for discovering a new colony planet. So there are six colony planets that we set up, which are all face down. So whilst this news card is active, we will gain an additional point for exploring any of these planets. Once we move to the second round, the first one will move across to the right and the next card will come across. And at this point, both of these cards will remain active. This one here says that you're gonna roll a D6 and it is gonna decide one of the six sides of Kelresa. You are then gonna take a token and put it on that side to show that you cannot move between those two boundaries for this turn or next turn. So each of these, as I say, they kind of shake up the experience and they're very self-explanatory. Just read through the cards and you'll see what happens. Once you take out a third one, the one that's furthest across will simply come off. These ones will slide across and another one will come out. So you will always have two active. You can choose to stack them if you prefer not to slide them, but that is how it works. Once the new system has been updated, each player in turn order, starting with the first player, is going to resolve their entire turn and you're going to move around the table. You are going to start by moving the moon. The moon is always going to move around Kelresa one space. So each turn it is going to move one space, skipping over the cube. It can never be on the same tile as the cube. You are then going to take up to four actions. You can unlock a fifth action, which we'll talk about later, but for now you have got four actions, which you can use these white cubes to represent which actions you're going to do. When you take an action, simply put it into one of these four slots just to remind you of how many actions you've taken and how many you've got left. As I say, you'll get the fifth one, which you can unlock later. All of your actions are on your player sheet down here. So let's just quickly go through them and then we'll talk about how they work. First up, you can pick up on drop civilians and you can buy and sell cargo and scrap metal as a free action. So these don't cost your cubes. If you are on a space that allows you to pick up civilians or buy and sell cargo or scrap metal, you can do that at any time, any number of times you like for free on your turn. Next up, you can drift. Drifting allows you to move one space. You can full speed, that allows you to move the maximum number of spaces your ship is capable of. You can interact, which allows you to perform various actions on a space. You can use your crystal, which you have here. Your crystal allows you to move with an additional space with some benefits, which will come to shortly. And you can repair your ship, because as you take damage, you're going to need to repair. So let's start at the beginning. There's lots of different things in defection which allow you to kind of make up your own path. There's no order. You might want to move, you might want to fight, you might want to upgrade, you might want to do them in different orders each time you play. So we're just going to go through the basics of how some of these actions are going to work. Let's start with the interact and free actions. So 
We are on Calressa. This has got a purple cube, which represents the cargo cubes. Cargo cubes are free actions, so we can choose to take as many cargo cubes as we like and place them into our capacity. You will see we have got four spaces down here on our ship. These all cost one credit each, and we start with seven credits, so in theory we could buy up to seven, but we only have space for four, so we could choose to do that. Likewise, we are at Calressa, which is the only place that you can get your population from. So these are the civilians that you personally are responsible for rescuing from Calressa to get them away from the war. You can, for a free action, pick up these civilians from this location and again put them into your capacity. So for example, I might choose on my turn to take two of my population and then to buy two cargo. This is going to cost me two money, so I'm going to put my credits down by two and now my ship is full and I can't hold any more stuff. Of course, you can do that in any combination. The cargo cubes here are limited. Your population here is limited. So when they run out, you are done and you can't use those anymore more. There are a few exceptions that we'll see shortly. You can interact here at the market. Anywhere you see the market symbol allows you to perform an interact action by spending one of your cubes to interact with the market. An interaction at the market allows you to buy any number of upgrades that you can afford. You have crew and they have their costs in the bottom left hand corner. So you can see eight, eight, three, six, and so on. And you can see that we've only got a certain amount of money. So we're not going to be able to buy too much too quickly. You can buy a ship upgrade. Ship upgrades cost 10 money and they also require two scrap metal, which is another resource you'll be able to collect later in the game. Finally, you can get your upgrades. Your upgrades will go onto the upgrade tracks, your crew will go into the crew spaces, and your ships will go into the ship space. You can only ever have one ship, so if you buy a new ship, the previous ship is going to be disposed of, and it's going to replace it. You can have up to two crew. If you purchase a new crew member, then it is simply going to replace a previous one, and you can unlock a second space by spending two credits and one scrap. So to start with, you can only have one crew member. Once you've unlocked this by paying this cost at any point you like, you can free up the second space. Now, upgrades, you have got eight spaces, but as you can see, there are four green, two purple, and two gold, meaning you can only put green upgrades into the green socks, purple into the purple, and slow, so on. You have to move from left to right. The first one is going to cost you one credit, so you can buy any of the green upgrades and place it here for one credit. The next one's cost you three, three, and then four, so the cost is going to go up. When you cross a threshold to move into the next color, you will have to pay an additional fee. In this instance, you'll need to pay one scrap metal. And once you've done the two purples, which cost five each, you'll have to pay another scrap metal to be able to unlock the two gold slots. You will also see that this purple area here has a bonus, as does this yellow um, gold area up here. The gold area is simply three additional points at the end of the game. The purple area allows you to unlock the solar panels, which will give you some bonuses when navigating some of the map tiles that we'll see shortly. The final thing you're going to want to know about this is that if you have two crew of the same faction, so therefore the same colour, so two greens, two reds, two oranges, or two blues, and you've got them both, one in each slot, then you will unlock a bonus that allows you to re-roll a die. So if you do get two of the same, there is a bonus because they want to work to together. After all, these factions are at war, and if you hire mercenaries from different factions, they're not going to be quite as susceptible to your plans as if you've got two guys from the same side. Okay, so that's interacting with upgrades and the market. I should say that at any point, if you want to discard something, you can, but you're not going to get the money back. It's an investment you've already paid for, but the slots can be freed up for other things to place in them. We've also talked about getting cargo, and we've also talked about getting population, and we've talked about spending money. These are the critical things in the game. So next up, let's just talk about the cube. The cube has got three contracts on it, which are placed there at the start of the game, and new contracts can be unlocked as we play through the game as well. Every time one is completed, it is going to be discarded, the others will move across, and a new one will come in and fit its place. Contracts are very straightforward. In the top, there is a requirement, and in the bottom there is a cost. For example, 
This one here has three missile symbols, and this means that between your ship, your upgrades, your crew, and everything else on your player sheet, you need to have three missile symbols visible. If you achieve that, you can then spend the cost at the bottom, in this case it is a cargo cube from your ship, and you will get the reward at the top. In this case, it's going to be five credits. The next one across is going to be the solar panels, so if you've managed to unlock your purple upgrades, you've got your solar panels, you also have a repair upgrade on your ship and you spend a cargo cube you will get five money and a point and on the right hand side you will see over here that this says that you need to have free hull and free movement which are again ship values which you can upgrade through ships and upgrades and other bonuses you'll have to spend a scrap metal and you'd get seven credits and one point all of these points that you earn are added immediately on the track to show you how well other players are doing so if you complete a contract, you go to the space, you use an interact action as shown as the symbol at the top, you complete it by having these things available, you don't lose them, you just need to have them, and then you spend the cost and get the reward. You'll also see on the cube that you can trade at any time two loot cards or two scrap metal for points. This is something at the end of the game you're probably going to want to do just to get rid of all that extra stuff that you've accumulated and not managed to use. So that is our starting spaces. Let's start talking about movement and exploration. I mentioned earlier that drift allows you to move one space, full speed allows you to move your maximum space. Your maximum space is equal to the number of hexagons that you've got visible on your ship and across all of your upgrades. So currently we have two. If we had this upgrade here, this ship here, we would have an additional one, so we'd have three. If we had this upgrade equipped, we would have four. And also we can get planetary bonuses, such as this one up here, which would give us even more movement. Each time you move, you are going to move one space to any adjacent, so any touching hexagon to the one you're on, and you're going to flip over the tile if it's not already um, discovered. So in this instance, we're going to flip this one over, and you'll see that this is a wormhole. Wormholes are defined by this visual, and you'll see that there are two spaces here for cubes. So we're going to take two white cubes and put them here. Tiles that have cubes on them will remain face up until all of the cubes have been used. In this instance, if we were on this space and another wormhole was visible, we could remove a cube to move instantly to that other location, linking the two spaces via the wormhole. Once all of the cubes are gone, that tile will disappear and a new one will come in its place. You will see in the right hand side here that it has a red hexagon with some circle arrows around it. This means when you remove this tile, you would replace it with a new red hexagon. If it has a white, you'll replace it with a white, and if it has a red and white, you'll get to choose, and we'll see some of those shortly. Generally speaking, it's safe to assume the red tiles are more dangerous, they're more risky, but there's also some better rewards in them. So you're going to want to be careful about where you go. If I move on to this next space, you will see here is the sun. Again, this uses the solar panel um, upgrade, which you can get on your ship. And if you get onto this one, it is going to allow you to take one of your time actions back and use it again this turn. So some of these are going to help you a lot with movement and being more efficient and doing more stuff. However, there are also ones like the encounter. You see, space isn't safe. And if you go onto an encounter space, you're going to go into a fight. I'm going to talk about combat just in a minute, but needless to say, that is a bad, bad thing. Other tiles we may discover, and I'm not going to go through all of them because there are many, many, and they're all explained in the rule book, are things such as another wormhole. As I say, this could be here, which would allow you to jump between two spaces. You might find a space station, which would have an additional contract on it. So if you have this, you are going to put the contract on here. Once the contract is completed, this tile will disappear. Most of the tiles in the game are only there for a short period of time unless they have something on them, such as cubes or contracts and then they are you they are there until they are used up you'll see with the so the star over here this doesn't have a cube so at the end of my turn this is going to be discarded and it is going to be immediately replaced with a red tile because it has the red symbol here 
You'll see this one has the red and white, which I talked about. So at the end of the turn again, this encounter tile would be removed away. And then the player can choose whether it's a red or a white they like to put there. And let's say they want to put a white, because in this instance, they've moved through this tile to here. And they're probably going to want a safe route back because it's early on in the game. You're also going to find other tiles such as this one here. This is a black hole and if you go to a black hole you're going to have to roll a six sided dice and you will move out in the direction of the result of your roll. And finally things like this is the green gas cloud. If you have a green gas cloud um, enhancement upgraded onto your ship then you can use it to move an additional space for free this turn. So you're going to find that there's negatives, there's lots of things that are going to ask you to do new stuff and you're going to continue continue to see the game board changes and evolves based on these options that are set up for you. As for the red tiles, just to give you an example, as I say, you've got several encounters. You've also got things like this, which is an explosion. This will immediately do damage to anyone who's on this tile and anyone in any of the immediate tiles as well, leaving burning damage on those spaces. So those are going to be where you start to have big effects that impact multiple players. Now, Let's continue with our movement. When you first get to a Connolly planet, you are going to turn it over. You are not going to know where any of these planets are. Let's say that we've turned this one over and we've got Verterus. You are then going to have the option for free, as always with your free actions, to drop off your cargo and also your population if you wish to. Cargo cubes are very straightforward. You start in the bottom left here where it says cargo and you are gonna place them in the most available space. So in this instance, onto this four and then onto this three. You are gonna get money equal to the number shown. So this says a four and a three. I have placed those two down there and therefore I'm gonna gain seven money. I'm gonna increase this to 12 using the tens and the ones tracks accordingly. If you put population or civilization onto a planet, then if you were the first person there, you were going to be dominating it. Dominating means that you've placed the most population onto one place. By dominating it, you are going to take the planetary bonus token and you're going to take one of your domination tokens. You are going to find the same location. So Virtuous is here. I'm going to find this down in this bottom right corner and I'm going to show that I've dominated this at some point during the game. Finally, I'm going to put this on here and now for the rest of the game, I have one additional hand symbol to use whenever I need. However, if another player comes along and they put their population on here, if they place more population cubes on there than I have, so let's say they've got three civilians, then they are going to take the bonus away and they're going to put it onto their player sheet. However, I will still keep the token to show that I've dominated it at some point. At the end of the game, you are going to get points based on how many of these you are dominating. So this is a really important part of the game. You are also going to notice that not only have we dropped off the cargo cubes here, but we can also buy them back. Whenever you are on a planet, let's just say for example there are a few more cargo cubes here and we've just come across to this space, you can now see that we've gone all the way up to there only have a value of 2. However, we can now pay 2 to purchase it and to put it back onto our ship. So you can buy cargo from one location, move to another location and sell it to try and gain a profit. Of course, that's gonna come down to the board layout and the options that you've got available to you. Now, let's finally talk about the other actions on these spaces. You will see in this instance, we can spend four money or we can um, to buy a scrap metal, which is the scrap metal tokens here, which are used to pay for various things such as upgrades and ships, or we can sell scrap metal back for four money. So again, we can earn um, scrap metal and buy and sell it from different locations. Each planet is gonna have different values. We can also interact here using the interact action to use the market to again access any of the crew, ship, or ship upgrades that we wish to purchase. Now. Finally, in the middle of these, you will see that there are planetary bonuses. This one says planetary bonus of one. This means whenever you get the planetary income, you're going to gain one money. So this is something we didn't talk about previously, but you will see if we go back over to the tracker up here, that each round alternates between planet bonuses and bounty bonuses. At the start of each round, 
every player that has a planetary bonus or bounty bonus will get those incomes accordingly. So in round two, if I'm dominating this planet, I'm going to get additional one money income. And if I have other planets as well, then I'm also going to maintain having that extra income. This is a good way to build up some sort of regular income coming into your system to allow you to purchase and do other things. So we've now talked about taking over and dominating planets and this is really important because this is going to be a really big money part in the game. We've talked about purchasing upgrades, we've talked about the round system, we've talked about exploration but finally I want to talk about combat because combat is a very big part of this game. Now you can choose to avoid it completely or you can choose to completely go full in and out and fight 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 depending on whether you're more interested in kind of the pick up and deliver side of the game or the fighting side of the game. There are three different sides to combat. The first one is the encounter cards that we talked about, the second one is player versus player combat and the third one is planetary defences. So I want to talk about those kind of in reverse order and then we'll talk about how it actually works. When you arrive at a colony you can choose to put one of your planetary defence guns down on it. You will see that each of these has different costs. So this one here costs one scrap metal, this one here costs two scrap metal and I only have two available in the whole game. So should I choose to take one of these I'm going to take the token and place it onto a planet. This means anyone who comes to that planet will have to defeat my planetary defense before they're allowed to access it. So you can build up defenses around your civilians and your market areas to try and keep them for yourself and fight off other players. This one here you will see has got a one red missile symbol which means that it's going to be doing one damage in fights. This one here has got two red missiles which means it's going to be doing two damage in fights but they do have different costs. We'll talk about the mechanics of fighting in just a moment. Next up we said that there's player versus player combat. If at any point you move onto a space with another player's ship, you can choose to have a fight with them. Now fighting in defection is very very straightforward for player versus player in that you just do the same system as you do with encounters. However, before the fighting begins you can negotiate, you can plead and beg them not to destroy you, you can give them things, it's entirely up to you, the only thing you can't give another player is some legend, so you could give them a loot card, you could give them a piece of cargo, you could ask them just to go and get a drink from the kitchen for you, anything you like it's up to you to discuss and if it's accepted the fight is avoided. If you defeat another player, you are going to get to take their honor token and place it onto your player sheet. Now, this is really great because if someone then comes and defeats them, they will take all of the honor tokens that player has, meaning that if you are defeated, you are not going to be worth any points to anyone else for the rest of the game unless you defeat someone back. And the more people you destroy, the more valuable you become to other players, meaning that they're more likely to shoot back at you. So there's kind of a little bit of an interesting balance there to stop one person kind of gaining too much from picking on someone and also making it more risky for them because they make themselves a valuable target. So Let's talk about the encounters. We talked about how when you flip over a hexagon, you are going to get an encounter. You can't flee. You, well, sorry, you can flee, but you have to go into the fight. So you have an immediate choice. You can either flip over one card or you can choose to flip over two cards. This means that if you are not someone who's really geared up fighting, you're going to want to just fight one thing at a time. But as you get further into the game, you get more upgrades, you become very powerful, you may want to take on two at a time because you're going to get more rewards and you're going to gain more for it. So let's talk about the specifics of encounter fighting, then we'll talk about player versus player fighting and then we'll jump back to the planetary defense fighting. The first thing you're going to want to do is count up how many hands you have and how many hands the encounter has. An encounter card is always resolved by another player at the table. So if I am the blue player, the other player in a two player game or one of the other players in a three or four player game will take this card and put it in front of them. I'm going to keep it this way up just so you can see it more clearly. They are going to take a number of dice equal to the hands, so in this instance it's going to be four, and then I am going to take a number of dice equal 
equal to my hands. You will see that I've got two hands on my ship and I've got zero hands on my crew and zero hands in upgrades, but I did get one hand for dominating this planet earlier, which means that I have a total of three hands and I'm gonna roll three dice. That's not great, but if I had upgrades, if I had more crew, you can see many of the crew will come with lots of hands to give you more and more control when you're fighting. Now, at the same time, everyone is going to roll their dice and they are going to resolve them. You are going to see that each die has a number of different faces. You have the um, pilot skill face, you have the missile face, you have the blank space, you have the machine gun space, and then you have the repair space. As a player, you are going to choose to put these onto spaces that you have available. So I have a machine gun, I have a machine gun space, so I'm going to put it onto here to activate that space. A blank I can't use and the mechanic symbol I can't use because I don't have those things. Now let's assume that I also have um, this tile here, this is a nice upgrade for me. Let's assume that I also have a missile tile over here and let's finally assume that I am going to have a system um, one over over here. Now, this gives me a few more options. I can now put this on here in the attempt to repair myself, or I can put any dice onto my systems um, slot, which will allow me to re-roll any number of other dice. So this allows you to sacrifice one to re-roll all of the others or whichever you like. So in this instance, I'm going to re-roll this one and I've got the mechanic again, so it's back. Let's assume that I got a missile, I could put that there, or the pirate skill and put it here and so on. Whilst this is happening, the other player is also doing the same thing. So they've rolled their four dice and they're gonna then choose which slots to put them on. You will see there are three different slots here. We've got a missile, a machine gun, and a machine gun. So in this instance, this player is gonna put a machine gun here, a machine gun here, and these two are gonna do nothing because they don't have the other symbol, and this is going to define what they do. So they are going to do one heart damage and one square damage. Square damage is ship damage, which means that I'm going to take a damage on my ship, and heart damage is crew damage, which means I'm going to take a damage on my crew. You will see that each crew member has a number of health. I have got three health, so if I take damage, I'm going to lose one health. If I take more damage, I'm going to lose two, and when I take the third one, I'm going to lose this crew member, and they are going to be gone from the game. Now you can heal people through loot cards and through other tiles you encounter. Likewise with your ship, you can repair your ship using the repair ship action or through other tiles you encounter, but it is possible that your ship might get destroyed. As we say, we took one damage here. Now, we don't have any shields, which means that's going to be an immediate one damage we take. We only have three hull. When the third piece of damage comes in, our ship may be, will be destroyed. Now, obviously, we could have bought some shields. Each shield we purchase allows us to absorb one piece of damage for a fight. Now, this is really important because at the end of combat, your shields will regenerate. Your hull will not. So any shield damage you take is only temporary, whilst hull damage is permanent until you repair it. Now, they are doing, as we said, one um, damage to our crew, and they are doing one damage to our ship. We can choose where the damage goes. With the crew, we only had one member, which means we can't, but with the ship, we could choose the shields or the hull. Because our shields will regenerate, that is the logical place for us to put it, so we'll put it on there. Now, we obviously had our mechanic symbol on here, and we had our machine gun. Our machine gun is simply going to do one damage, as shown here, to the enemy. So we are going to put one damage token onto them. You will see here that they have got uh, free health. So once we've done free damage to them, they are defeated. And then we have got our mechanic. So how the mechanic works is simple. We've resolved damage. No one has been defeated, so the fight will continue. So now we are going to roll for our repairing. This happens if and only if you survive combat but have taken damage and we are simply going to roll a d6. We have got the number three and you will see here that it says three or more. We got three or more which means that we succeeded so we can remove one damage from here. For each repair um, dice we had on each symbol, we would roll a number of d6 and decide how many of them succeed and how much damage we recover. Now, the fight continues. Everyone takes all of their dice back off and then we re-roll them and we go again. We keep going until someone wins. 
if you win, you are going to get a loot card, which is going to give you a bonus. You are also going to keep the card to show that you have destroyed them. So you are going to take this and you are going to place it next to you. This is going to give you a bounty income and that is going to be worth um, two credits and a point each time the bounty income happens, which obviously is going to help you progress. The more um, you kill early on, the more income and points you're going to get later in the game. Now, let's assume that we didn't want to fight. Let's assume we're not interested in fighting. We're not geared up for fighting. We can simply choose to flee. To flee is just going to cost us one point. So we could simply say, we're down to four. We're not going to have this fight and move on. So you can avoid all combat should you wish by negotiating with other players or by fleeing. The last couple of things I'd like to talk about in combat is the pilot skill so let's assume that we have got um this ship and this ship has given us a machine gun coming in twice and it has also got a missile coming in this is now doing three different sources of damage you see this little skull here this means that it's going to kill any population we might have so let's assume that we have a civilian on our ship this one is targeting that civilian rather than us which obviously is going to be bad for us and again, our ship and crew damage. Now, if I have a die on my pilot skill, I for each of these I have, again, I can roll a d6, and I got a five. This says four. If you get four or more, that means it succeeds, and then you can avoid one source of damage. So I can choose one of these three options and avoid it, and therefore it's not going to hit me. In this case, I'm probably going to save my population, because any time a civilian dies, it's going to go into your graveyard, and at the end of the game, you're going to lose points for every civilian that's in here and also you're going to have less chance to dominate different planets so player versus player combat works exactly the same but each player is using their ship fighting against each other you are no longer using the encounter cards you are simply using your ships fighting to the death if you die and by die i mean your ship is destroyed then each of your crew members will take one damage and your ship is going to go up to maximum damage because of course you have died so in this instance if we were to die let's assume that we have taken three damage and therefore we have been destroyed and therefore we will have to put a damage onto our crew if this kills the crew they will be removed from the game now half of the cargo cubes and half of the population that we have on our ship at the time will be lost so in this instance we have got two civilians so one is going to die and go to the graveyard we have got one cargo divided by two becomes half everything rounds down so it becomes zero and as such we do not lose them so that's what's going to happen. Now, if you've got free damage or maximum hull damage on your ship at any time, you can only do a repair action before you continue. A repair action costs you one of your white cubes and it's going to remove one of these from your ship and allow you to continue moving forward. There are upgrades and other cards and tiles that allow you to remove more damage from your hull quicker, but this is the basic minimum available. Let's just quickly talk about the... Um, final thing which we said is loot cards loot cards are going to give you cards that you keep and can use at any point you like this one says play to avoid taking one ship damage discard after use this one says play to add one movement point to a single move action discard after use and this one says play to remove one damage from your ship crew and this one says that you can play a planetary when your um, planetary defense is attacked you um, have minus one and so on so these are all things that are going to modify and give you kind of cards you can play at any time to help you and get further into the game finally going back to the planetary defenses if you fight a planetary defense the player who controls it is going to roll dice equal to the number of hands above the planetary defense gun that they've placed there it's going to have a number of health equal to the number of shields and they're going to simply roll dice so let's say i've got this one over here i'm going to roll four die and i am going to four dices and i'm going to roll them and i have got zero missiles that means i do zero damage unlike other combat you do not assign these to spaces so if i was to roll this that would be three missiles which would do three damage and if i was on this one it would do six damage again you're going to go back and forwards fighting between your gun 
and the ship and the normal rules apply for destruction and so on if a player is destroyed they simply get moved back one space so that's how combat works and that's how the majority of the core actions in the game do play out so the final thing i want to talk about is scoring and the seventh round once we have got to the end of year six we are going to simply turn this over when we turn this over you are going to note on the other side that there are two more rounds however these two rounds have no signal this is because Keleressa has been destroyed in the final two rounds there are a lot of negative things that we have to take into consideration so when we start the seventh round, Kelressa gets turned over and has become destroyed. This means that you can no longer use this space. You can no longer buy or sell from the space or even move onto it. If you were on this space at the time, you were going to move off to another space and you were going to take one damage and that may destroy you. Equally, any of the remaining population that is left here, so all of the civilization that you have not rescued and moved away, is going to be killed so we are going to move all of this into our graveyard which is going to be a lot of negative points at the end of the game the contracts on the cube will be discarded and new ones will come out and replace them and all of the news cards which are active are going to be removed and there will be no more news cards for the rest of the game Finally, the two planets that have not yet come out will be placed around the board into these two final faces and we'll place the other two planetary bonuses on top of them. So this means that all eight planets will be in the game, but two of them will only be discovered in the final two rounds or two years of the game. We continue to play these rounds in um, the same way as we've played everything else outside of those rules, and you'll find summaries of all of these events in the rulebook to remind you of how it works. At the end of eight rounds, you are going to score up. I'd like to just quickly run through this, but before we do that, let's just talk about the last couple of things that we've not yet discussed. We have got the moon. If you move onto the moon at any time, you are going to be able to take a scrap metal. This is just a scrap metal token that you will be able to put in front of you and spend. When the moon moves, you are going to move with the moon, and it's just simply an additional space that you can move onto or off off. If you are on the planetary um, on a planet or a tile and the moon moves onto the tile you cannot jump onto the moon it is an additional move action to get on it multiple players can be on the moon you cannot initiate combat with another player who is on the moon on the caressa or on a planet these are all safe zones so only if you end up in the middle of space are you at risk so with that said, let's talk about the scoring. You are going to add up the following things, and these are all, as I say, defined on this sheet for your reference. You are going to talk about dominating planets. So for every single planet, you are going to look at the player who is dominating it. This is the person who is going to have the most population or civilization on that planet, and they are going to score points equal to the rank that has been achieved by cargo cubes. So in this instance, we are in tier two and the first player is going to get six points if we had managed to put some more cargo cubes on here we'd be in the next tier and it'd be worth eight points so as you buy and sell cargo cubes between colonies you're going to change the value of how many points they're worth Whoever is in second place and has the second most cubes is going to get two points or whatever is shown on the bottom of the planet. Now, do keep in mind, the first player is the person who's dominating it. If I was to put two cubes here and then you were to bring two civilians and place them there too, I would still be dominating because I controlled it first. You would have to put a third one there to take that control. This means that there is never a tie for first place. However, there can be a tie for second place and in this instance the tie players will all share the points next up the domination track each time you dominate a planet you are putting one of your tokens onto your player sheet to show which planets you have dominated you will score three points for every triangle that you have completed so this here is a triangle that's going to score me three points now if i was to have another one here this would be a second triangle so i would score six points and likewise if i was to put this here it'd be nine points and so on so if you manage to dominate all eight planets you're going to get a huge amount of points but good luck doing that
You are then going to score a point and get two credits for every single bounty that you have. So every encounter card that you have kept and you are going to add the points to the track and take the two credits to add to your credit pool. You are then going to get any points for your ship upgrade. So if you've managed to unlock the ship upgrade bonus, you're going to score points for that. And then you're going to get two points for every single honor token you have, whether this is just your starting one or ones from other players. Now, you are going to lose one point for every three civilians that have been left in your graveyard. So in this instance, we're going to lose quite a number of points. And finally, the player with the most credits at the end of the game scores two points. And if it's a tie, then of course, both players are going to score those two points. Whoever has got the most legend after all of this is going to be declared the winner. However, in the case that two players have the same amount of legend, the player who is dominating the most amount of planets is going to be the winner. If, even after that, there are two or more players who are tied with the most legend and are dominating the same number of planets, then no one wins. You see, you didn't make a name for yourself, you have not created a legend, and the entire thing was pointless. I hope this has helped you learn how to play Defection. If you get any questions, please do feel free to ask below in the comments and I will do my best to help you. Until next time, guys, I hope you keep having fun and keep on adventuring.